CPS, APS, Police. Guess what? You can guess all the S's that lead to our babies stolen, arrested, and even death. Mamas, papas, don't show your real feelings or sorrow or distress. Mm, no mandated reporters here. Rooted in racist classes, crapless principles of fear. The lie of ghettoization and separation nation. Each seizure of our babies is bloodstained dollars for the colonial domination. I couldn't breathe, whispered black warrior mama Lynesha Franklin through tears into the mic about the unspeakable pain of dealing with the endless number of false accusations from what I affectionately call child separation services. Yeah, that's right. This poverty scholar calls it, a.k.a. Child Protective Services. Livesha was one of over 30 mamas and grandmamas, fathers and uncles and supporters gathered in front of the Santa KKK Clara County Injustice Center on May 19th. From all four corners, black, white, Asian, Rasa, this mama shared the nightmare of a court-sanctioned system filled with so much corruption, it's almost hard to list. Yeah, today's podcast from a poverty scholar specifically goes out to all the mamas and the daddies, the uncles and the grandmamas who have had to deal with that racist ass system. That racist ass system that says it's there to protect our children. But we know that actually it's rooted in the heteropatriarchal lies of capitalist normalcy. This poverty scholar had the blessing of attending a powerful action for mamas and daddies and babies who have struggled with that injustice court system. We held it intentionally on Malcolm X Born Day, and it was organized by a new collaboration between California Families Rise and poor magazine Prensa Pobre. We must unite as parents, put aside our differences, rise up together, said Michelle Chan as she told her family's story of CPS abuse and encouraged us all to come together because together we are strong. When Mama and Warrior for Justice Michelle approached us at Poor Magazine about forging a collaboration, although we were already overwhelmed with all the other ish that us poor people's got to do just to stay alive, stay with a roof over our heads, clothes on our back and shoes on our feet, We knew that we could say nothing but yes. We knew that lifting up Mama D's struggle, Mama D's project, back in 1998, there was no way we could say no. You see, Poor Magazine's Court Watch project was launched by my fierce, ghetto, fabulous, disabled, Afro-Bodequan mama, poverty scholar, in 1998 as a response to the P. TSD, the severe trauma caused to families struggling with the child separation services system. My mom and I had multiple personal experiences with this trauma over and over again. As an uh, as a orphan, my mama, a mixed race unwanted child, was called a ward of the court. Subject to the extractive, racist, unsafe foster care system. In that case, her own teen domestic violence survivor mama gave her up to the system because my grandmama's guilt of having a child out of wedlock, a half-breed, a you-know-what child, as she called, as mama was called by racist-ass foster parents, My broken grandmother gave up her parental rights when she was on the run from a severely abusive husband who thought she thought she had killed. And my mama was trafficked in that system. 
Yes, I did say trafficked in the foster and juvenile dependency court system to over 35 foster homes. Every single one physically and sexually abusing her, starving her, hating her until she ended up in an orphanage where they enslaved, berated, bullied, and hid her into indentured servitude as the orphanage was only philanthropist funded to accept poor white girl orphans. Mama made it out of that somehow, like all us poor peoples do, by any means necessary but not unscarred. Later in life, when I was 11, she could no longer fight, as she called it. After she was laid off from one job she tried to get, where she was doing revolutionary love work, she ended up disabled. We ended up on the street. And one year later, after violent sweep, that's code for stealing lives and belongings of poor people, I ended up in a group foster home after being taken from my mama because she was seen as unfit. Our homelessness was seen as abuse. Fast forward another 10 years and my foster sister was taken from our home because my mama told her to not wear makeup at 14. And the public school age separation services said she wasn't being allowed to be a teenager. I can't describe to you the levels of all of this pain compounding on more pain, but I will tell you that it breaks the hearts of parents and guardians in ways that are almost unspeakable. I had never laid a hand on my son. I was a strict mama, but nothing out of the ordinary. Now, they discriminated against me because I was strong and I was black. Lynesha concluded to the audience of over 30 parents standing in front of that injustice center. She was right. There was a series of code words they have that describe parents in distress. They shut down normal grief. And the CPS and juvenile dependency court system is one of the most racist and classes and corrupt systems of any. All the different players, from the public pretenders who you are supposedly appointed to the judge and the anti-social workers, as I affectionately call them, all conspire together against the parent. It's mind-numbing, crazy-making, because there's no way out And if this podcast from a poverty scholar is going out to any parents who are dealing with this system, best believe if you don't jump through their hoops, you will not get your babies back. And it's the only court system in this stolen land that allows hearsay into a case and completely sanctions it. Document everything and don't give up. Robert Powell, a powerful advocate and attorney for parents and children for over 28 years that has successfully brought precedent-setting cases against the juvenile injustice system, spoke to our crowd. they got to open these courts. There are over 20 states that have opened up the juvenile dependency court. This has to happen in California because of the abuse of power. Attorney Powell went on to explain that the draconian system is a blatant example of abuse of judicial power. We did it on Malcolm X and Yuri Kochiyama's birthday intentionally. Brother Buffalo brought up Sister Yuri and Brother Malcolm and the mic. Brother Buffalo, a longtime poor magazine, extended family member and and, uh, member of the self-help hunger program in occupied North Wuchin. Momi Palapas, Jeremy Miller, Israel Munoz, Jonathan Gomez, and many more Poor Magazine families showed up, stood up, and spoke up. But the reality is many of us families have just given up. In our Liberation School, Decolonized Academy, we refuse to be mandated reporters. We refuse to engage with the heteropatriarchal white psychology 
industrial complex. We refuse to practice separation. And in fact, it doesn't mean we look away from abuse. It means we bring our families closer in. With a combination of community reparations, village support, and endless work, Poor Magazine lives without CPS and Polis. Poor Magazine and California Families Rise will be doing more work as California Families in Resistance. But in the meantime, please, poor families, do your best to not give up, stay up, and fight back. The system is corrupt. You are right. And we need our babies back.